In this video, we're going to talk about some tough topics behind wildlife photography. We'll discuss baiting, staging, setups, captive animals, and a bunch of other things. Let's start off by talking about what wildlife photography is. What are the goals? To me, wildlife photography is going out and capturing images of wild animals in their natural environment without influencing their behavior. You might be just doing this to record uh, particular evidence of a species or evidence of certain behaviors for research, or you might be trying to create something artistic or creative. Regardless, there are a lot of challenges in wildlife photography. For one thing, we can't always guarantee the location of the animals. Secondly, uh, even if we find the animals, uh, we typically can't direct them uh, in their behavior. And thirdly, uh, we can't control the weather, and light is a very important element uh, that we need uh, to, to photograph. So when you think about it, um, it's a pretty wild idea uh, to go out and try to get images of animals given all of these challenges, but that's the wild part of wildlife photography. Given these challenges, what we're going to talk about is some of the techniques that are used by wildlife photographers or people who help wildlife photographers uh, to get the images that they are seeking to get. And sometimes this is about saving time and effort or money or just guaranteeing or increasing the likelihood uh, that you'll get the results uh, that you seek. I think one of the things that's important to note before we get into this discussion is that in this video I primarily want to raise awareness about this uh, both for wildlife photographers as well as people who are viewing wildlife images. This is not about judging people for what they do uh, and everyone has a, a degree of comfort. They have to be comfortable with uh, what they're doing and uh, in many cases, I know also people uh, go into situations and they didn't realize that uh, certain things were, were going on. So uh, let's just talk about the topics first and then perhaps in another video we'll also uh, get deeper into uh, some of the discussion about it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is two of the techniques that are used to uh, get the animals to come to the location where a photographer is. So the first of these is baiting. So baiting is using food to get uh, an animal to come to a particular place uh, and maybe also even to, to perform a particular behavior. And the bait may be live bait or it may uh, not be. Uh, there are lots of situations where this happens. Uh, in some countries and in some locations uh, with particular species, uh, those species are, for example, hunted and it's very hard uh, because they're shy as a result uh, to get close to animals. And so uh, there may be baiting that happens. They sometimes use roadkill that um, they put out for the animals. And in some of these cases, too, the photographers are hidden away in a hide uh, where the animal can't see them uh, so that... Uh, uh, they, the animal feels comfortable coming in and taking the bait. One of the, the species that is baited quite a lot, uh, especially in Canada where I live, is the snowy owl uh, and other types of owls as well. So there are uh, people and there are even workshops that are run uh, for wildlife photographers to have opportunities to photograph snowy owls where uh, they bring bait and uh, when you see these shots of a snowy owl coming down and flying with its wings outstretched and you know coming right into the camera and looking at the camera, uh, quite often those shots were obtained uh, through baiting. Now, all of these things we're going to discuss today are complex issues and they're not always black and white. So as an example, with baiting, sometimes there's baiting that happens at the time the photo was taken but other times uh, the baiting doesn't happen then but has taken place before and it's because the animal has become habituated uh, to the possibility of bait uh, that they'll come down close uh, to the photographer. And there are certainly people that, uh, for
for example, run workshops uh, where they are training the animals. Uh, they have you know, 25 or 30 live mice that they are feeding to the owls and they train them over a period of many, many weeks uh, before uh, the photographers come in and then when the photographers get there, they're also using the bait or they're perhaps not, not using the bait. So uh, baiting is one technique. The other technique uh, is herding. So what happens with herding is that there is some corralling uh, to get the animals to come closer. Uh, sometimes this is just with people on foot, uh, but more often it's with people on skidoos if it's in the winter or ATVs um, if it's uh, in other seasons. And again, these things are not black and white. There are degrees. So sometimes, just to go back to the baiting, uh, people will bait a little bit, uh, but though they will do it to the point where they think uh, they're you know, not influencing the animal's behavior and not affecting the animal in a detrimental way. Other people will just bait excessively. Uh, there have certainly been cases where animals became habituated to the bait uh, and as a result they became, for example, more comfortable with people and then were coming up to people, crossing roads. Uh, as a result, uh, they, they got hurt or killed. Uh, with the herding, uh, you can imagine situations where if the herding is done excessively, the animal will be under stress, uh, which is um, not a good thing for the animal and obviously also not a thing that you generally would want to be capturing in wildlife photos. Uh, so sometimes people will herd, uh, but if they see that the animal is being stressed, uh, they'll, they'll back off and, and let the animal go. What I want to talk about now is staging and setups. So what I mean by this is uh, not necessarily how the animal uh, is enticed to come uh, closer to the photographer, but how you get the animal to be in a situation where you can produce a, a very nice image. So as an example, there are places that are known as photography ranches, uh, and these are places where you can go and they're usually quite large, large parcel of land and you can often even stay there overnight uh, and stay there for multiple days. And usually at the ranch they have multiple locations and each location consists of a place where an animal, often birds, are uh, expected to, to come and uh, there is a hide where the photographer goes and sits in out of sight uh, to capture the images. And uh, the the location where the bird will land is typically a branch and it's often adorned with a flower or a berry or something to make it look attractive and and the background is all set up so that it looks very nice uh, because either the background is far away so it will be easily out of focus uh, in the, any shots that are taken uh, or if there are elements in the background that, that are seen in the images they're they're very aesthetically pleasing and they'll give you advice on uh, what focal length to use and other settings to use to get the best kind of shot. And what happens is you go and you sit in the hide and you wait uh, and eventually some bird species, uh, and sometimes it's, it's maybe only particular species that they know will come there, sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, a multitude of species, but some bird comes and sits on the branch and you take your shot and you get a shot that looks uh, pretty nice. Uh, this is a way of, of getting a shot that doesn't require you to perhaps uh, wait, for, wait to find that animal in, in an environment where you can get such a, an aesthetically pleasing shot. Often we, we capture photos of birds, but there's lots of distractions in the background, lots of ugly branches and things like that. Uh, to take this a step further, uh, there are places where you can go in South America where they have uh, quite elaborate setups for taking photos of hummingbirds. And what typically happens is that there is a hummingbird feeder and the birds are coming to those feeders all the time and when people arrive to take photos they take the feeders away and they put flowers in place. And they also have very elaborate uh, multi-flash, uh, high-powered flash setups because uh, typically, the photographers want to get images where the um, the wings are frozen in time. 
the motion of, of the wings is, 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 is captured. And to do that, you need to shoot with a very fast shutter speed, which means that you need a lot of light. And so the way that you can do that is by pumping out a, a ton of, of flash power. So uh, when, when the shot is taken, uh, the bird gets blasted with all of these uh, flashes. Now, although I'm talking about places where photographers may go uh, to, to take advantage of these setups, there are also people who use these kind of setups in their backyard. Um, and in some cases, for example, with the backgrounds, uh, the background is not even sort of real in that it's, it's staged, but it's real. It, in, in some cases, the backdrop up behind the branch is actually uh, just a, a painting or some other uh, image. Uh, so there are all kinds of ways of, of doing this. And uh, as I said, it's not so much about getting the animal to come there, uh, but it's more about how do you create and compose uh, an image that looks a, a certain kind of a way. The next thing I wanted to talk about is captive animals because everything I've discussed so far has been wild animals uh, about perhaps getting the wild animals to come closer or getting the wild animals in a certain place uh, where you can get a, a nice shot. There are places known as game farms uh, where photographers uh, can go to get shots of animals that uh, for one thing may not be species that uh, exist natively in that location. Uh, and often with these game farms, they're not just catering to photographers, but they're also animals that they have there. And sometimes they're often breeding the animals uh, and they're training the animals because the animals are used for film and TV work. Uh, but generally you can go there and you can see an animal that you perhaps might not be able to, to, to see in that area otherwise and uh, they'll bring the animal out and the photographer has an opportunity perhaps also to capture some particular behavior that the animal is uh, enticed to perform on command. So uh, to be clear these are captive animals, these are not wild animals and the behaviors that we sometimes hope to see and that we might be fortunate enough to see in the wild uh, sometimes are actually uh, performed on command. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is it's basically animal abuse and I will provide a link to a article that National Geographic published uh, a few months ago uh, where they did a lot of research into this and uh, I think it's something an article that everyone should read. So what I'm talking about here is uh, some things that go on uh, that involve people who are not necessarily uh, wildlife photographers in, in the sense that we might think of wildlife photographers. What I mean by that is that typically you see a wildlife photographer as someone that carries a somewhat complex camera system with a big lens because they want to photograph things that are far away and, and uh, may, that may be because they can't get close to the animals or because it would be dangerous to get close to those animals. But what's happening now is that uh, many people want to be taking photos of wildlife and they're just using their, the camera on their phone. Uh, and uh, they often want to get selfies where they're next to the animal and they're appearing in the image too. So, for example, there are places you can go where you can get uh, selfies with tigers. Now, obviously, when you think about it, uh, you would never do that in the wild uh, because you would surely die. Uh, so when you see someone with a, uh, in, a, in a selfie with a tiger, how did they get that photo? Well, it's possible that the, the animal is uh, domesticated in some way, but what has happened and what definitely goes on uh, is that uh, sometimes the animal is chained down and drugged. And this happens not just with tigers and, and lions and various big cats are, but also with elephants and other animals too. And there are lots of other kinds of situations like this um, that uh, are now being employed uh, to get these kinds of shots. And this is really um, abuse of the animals. They're not only captive, um, but they're sometimes in pretty deplorable conditions. I hope you found this discussion thought provoking and informative. My goal in this video was primarily to raise awareness of these things, uh, whether you're a wildlife photographer or someone who 
views, wildlife images. I think it's good to know uh, about these things and uh, we all have to decide for ourselves uh, what we're willing to do to get the images. I also know that, uh, as I've mentioned before, that uh, there are degrees of some of these things and uh, to some people, for example, you know, no baiting is acceptable to other people uh, a little bit uh, in done in certain ways is, is acceptable. Uh, and uh, so it's a, it's a very nuanced discussion and uh, it's not just uh, black and white. If you have any experiences or any opinions you wish to share, uh, would love to hear from you. Please feel free to comment down below. Uh, I will leave you with uh, these thoughts. Uh, one is that uh, whenever I'm looking at opportunities to go and photograph wildlife, if there are people who will be assisting me in that, if they're organizing a trip of some sort, I always ask uh, what techniques are being employed, if any, to get close to the wildlife and uh, or to see certain behaviors. And uh, also when anyone asks me a question about the photos that I took, uh, how did I get so close or how did I see something, I want to be able to, to tell them the truth. And also for me, the, the welfare of the animals is my highest priority. And uh, I also enjoy the challenges wildlife photography if, if it was too easy it would not be that interesting at all really uh, and so of course I want to get great images but uh, I, I also really love the fact that it's hard and and uh, yeah there are many times that you go out and you don't see animals uh, and sometimes you even pay a lot of money to go on a trip and uh, it doesn't pan out and uh, that's the way it goes so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video